When we examine closely depression, suicidal ideation, yes, there may be a lot of challenges in our life, a lot of challenging growth opportunities, heartache and loss. But even then, when we are struggling, when we are lying in bed for days and weeks, when we are having a hard time getting back to life, we are in a prison of our mind. We are trapped by the past and the mental story that we are absorbed in. And this is what we mean when we say we're in a mental prison. We have an inability to see ourselves from a different point of view, to become free from that loop of thoughts. And this is why every spirituality refers to awakening as liberation, as inner freedom. It's not that life needs to be perfect for us to be at peace. It's that we need to become free from attachment to that story, free from attachment to that narrative, whatever it is, good or bad, which are just going to fluctuate between the two. And when we break free from that identification with the body and persona, with those labels we put on ourselves, free from attachment to the beliefs we have and to the things that happen around us, which we say happen to me, but nothing happens to our truest, deepest selves. And so awakening is to expand our consciousness, to expand our perspective beyond ourselves, our bodies, our minds, and our story. That is where true freedom lies. That story may still be there, but we don't have to be a victim or a slave to that story. And we're not a victim to our circumstances. We just need to develop the practice of guiding our focus with conscious intention. So instead of being lost in thought, instead of feeling the weight of heavy emotions and that cycle of thought that says life is unbearable, why go on? We can put our focus on making a cup of tea, on sipping and tasting that tea. When we are stuck in the story, Life may even be perfect all around us. It may not be how it used to be. It may not be what we had been used to. But we are adaptable creatures. And the only thing preventing us from moving on is our attachment to the past, our attachment to what was, our attachment to the stream of thought and our identification with it. Those thoughts in our head are 1% of what we are experiencing. There are so many things around us at all times. And when we become stuck in that mental prison, we are unable to see anything else. We're unable to see what may be right in front of us. We're unable to see the potential our lives can take. We only need to recognize that life is full of joyful, great moments, beautiful, peaceful moments, and sometimes growth opportunities. They may be very challenging. They may be very difficult to overcome, but we all can overcome. We can all embrace that which is difficult instead of succumbing to 
that mental story that says we can't. And it's nothing more than a fiction. We really believe that story inside of us as if it is objective truth. But there are 8 billion objective truths <laughs> in this world. 8 billion opinions by people who are 100% certain that their opinion is objective truth. And in reality, we live in a multiverse of 8 billion different universes. And every one of them is equally valid and equally limited. And so simply by expanding our perspective, thinking of how someone else might see us and our situation, stepping out of thought altogether and putting our focus 100% on this moment and where I am and the sensations that I'm feeling and not just the words that pop into my head, we are able to expand our consciousness. And when we start to look at the causes and effects of our lives, the actions that led to this moment, we start to see that everything is fleeting and everything is constantly changing. So no matter what we are feeling, even though we are sure it's going to last forever, that will change. It's the mental story that tells us nothing will change. But deep down we know, no matter how dark it looks, and it may get even darker, we just welcome those growth opportunities. We just say, keep it coming. <laughs> we don't have to let anything crush us. And we don't have to even take on the weight. We can simply move and flow through it all. Because that weight doesn't exist. We create it. We don't have to carry it. And we don't have to accumulate all of the stuff in our lives that we wish weren't so. And we do that by accepting where we are and then creating the actions that will lead us to where we want to go. We never have to succumb to hopelessness. And there is infinite hope to latch on to. And when it's impossible to see, when we're in that extreme darkness where there is no light, we can become aware of that darkness. And that is the light of consciousness. And just being aware that there is this mental darkness, our light of consciousness obliterates it. That is how we realize that it is not real. It is nothing more than the fluctuations of our experience. It's the wanting a perfect life that makes us suffer when things don't go as we expected. A lot of people <laughs> will not be happy unless they have as much money as Jeff Bezos. <laughs> if they have as much as the second wealthiest guy on earth, they will not feel like they've made it. And we only can suffer when we have that narrow, limited perspective. The more we become present, we see reality as it is, and we no longer suffer because we're not resisting we're not fighting. There is no internal conflict. There's just acceptance with whatever we have. And it is in that presence that we can become joyful through those ups and downs. But becoming free from that mental prison simply takes 
the practice of presence, to no longer give 100% of our attention to our thoughts, to no longer believe those thoughts, and to simply witness them without grasping, without resisting, without following them blindly wherever they go to the darkest depths of our mind. And one way we can do that is when the mind is racing, when it is very dark, when it is reliving the worst moments in our lives, and we are unable to become present, to focus on our surroundings, something very easy we can do is to slow our thoughts down. So when we notice we're thinking and we notice how exhausting it is because it is racing a mile a minute and it will not take a break as it usually does for everybody, we can take control of those thoughts by thinking them very slowly. We elongate the words and we elongate the pauses between the words. And this is something very easy that anyone can do at any level of meditation or presence that they've developed. And we take over our stream of thought as we do this. We don't just slow it down, but we're actually able to guide it into any direction we want. We can put it into a positive place. And we simply do that by slowing it down. We all control the speed. And even though we can't not think of a purple octopus, if, we, if someone says purple octopus, we can slow down the thoughts. We can slow down what we think of a purple octopus. And that instantly brings a great amount of peace into our lives. And when we bring in peace, our thoughts become joyful and positive naturally. They become productive instead of chaotic. And sometimes when our mind is racing, all we really need to do is slow down. And it'll develop patience and peace effortlessly. And it is really taking over that stream of thought from unconscious, unguided, wild thinking to conscious, intentional, guided thinking that frees us from that unconscious ego that is trying to control our lives. And that is how our higher wisdom, our higher awareness can come in. And every moment of every day becomes infused with that wisdom and our life begins to take a new direction.